Hello and welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lærke and I am a knitwear designer from the southern part of Fyn in Denmark where I live with uh, my partner and our two children in the just outside the woods um, which we're really happy about <laughs> these days uh, since we cannot go out much I will talk more about that um, this is a podcast about knitting and if you're new uh, welcome to my podcast and if you're an old viewer welcome back I yeah I really wanted to podcast uh, and I had to send my kids out the house because as probably is the case for many people at the moment we are home since a week and a half almost um, we are allowed to go out uh, if you follow me on Instagram you will see in my stories that we do go out quite a lot still um, we don't go places with a lot of people we generally go to places in nature or sometimes to a playground like a nature playground where we know there is a lot of space and that is still uh, allowed where we live so we still do that um, and but most of the days we actually spend at home uh, getting the garden ready for the gardening season and yeah going into the woods we've been building a little hut or a little house in the with old branches and stuff and the kids really love that and um, it's just been really lovely because spring has finally arrived and it's not very warm at least not today it was warmer yesterday uh, but it's so sunny and blue sky and so clear and I just ah, it just fills me up with this spring energy and it makes me so happy so even if the world is a little bit of a scary place right now I actually feel quite happy and content uh, I hope all of you out there are doing okay and that you are not in a situation where you have to be afraid for your health or your loved one's uh, health. Uh, we're quite okay. Um, we took a week of holiday or my partner took a week of holiday and I kind of did too because it's just really hard to get anything done with two kids at home. Uh, my oldest one is four and a half and the youngest one is just one year old, um, a little bit more. And so they're just different ages and do different things and the little one cannot really I mean, he can play on his own, but he has to be fed quite often and changed quite often and stuff. So it's just, yeah, it's really hard to get things done. Um, so we kind of took this week as a little bit of a holiday. We were planning to go to Poland uh, on the 29th of uh, March. And we just luckily got our flight cancelled so we can get a refund on our ticket. But that meant we actually had a holiday planned. So we decided to... Um, uh, we decided to take a little break anyway, uh, but we cannot keep that up and it seems like first we were told it would be two weeks of uh, staying at home, so all kindergartens have been closed, all school, everything in Denmark, uh, but it seems that it's going to be a bit more. I think everyone knows it's a bit more, even though officially it hasn't been, we haven't been uh, told that it's more. So, by the way, I have some sunspots in my face, uh, it's because... I'm trying every time something new to get a better light um, and I set up the camera and everything but now the sun is going down so yeah I'm not gonna move everything around also because I don't know if you can see you can probably see some in the background but there's that toys all over and I just didn't want toys in my background <laughs> so instead of cleaning because that would take more time and I have the house for myself only for a little bit I just uh, decided to pick a spot that didn't look too bad um, today I'm sipping on some coffee because uh, I actually normally don't drink coffee in the afternoon but I'm a little bit tired um, I can feel like the sun is shining we've been out I just feel really sleepy so just to wake up a little bit I decided to make a little coffee um, yeah so what was I saying we've been we've been staying home most days and enjoying the spring that has arrived so yeah I've been doing a little bit of work I've been actually preparing a pattern release um, if it's up when I upload this video I will yeah you will be able to find it in the link below and if it's not yet ready or released I will just put it uh, next to the link because I tried to upload it earlier and there's some issue 
getting it on Ravelry. I don't know what's wrong, so I contacted a few people and hopefully I can figure it out soon. But actually what I'm releasing is an old pattern. It's what I'm wearing uh, and I haven't worn this one before. Uh, it's a little bit too big, that's why. Um, because this is uh, my Nerea sweater that I knit, f uh, I designed for Line Magazine issue 7. And it is made for size medium, and I am a size small, sometimes extra small, or yeah. So I, it's a little bit big, especially in the neck opening, but I actually think it looks really nice. It's uh, maybe I could wear it more. Uh, I haven't really worn it, also because I like to keep it nice for s as a sample. Um, so yeah, I'm going to release this pattern, uh, hopefully I can manage to have it up by, together with this video, if not it's gonna be up as soon as I can. Um, it has been, it is, uh, I'm going to have it tested for uh, 3XL and 4XL, um, I can't remember the measurements right now exactly, but uh, uh, I really want to have it uh, with larger sizes, so um, I already have one tester. Uh, I will start on the pattern uh, now, but uh, if you sh for any reason you should be interested, just go to my testing page on Ravelry, and there is a thread. I have a. I will put the my group. Uh, I will put my group down below, and there's a thread um, in my Ravelry group that is called testing, and probably it's a bit. Buried. I, maybe I can try to post it again. Um, the post about uh, this uh, doing the larger sizes. So, in case anyone is interested, it's um, there's no, there's no deadline or anything. I, w I will publish the pattern and then uh, I hopefully can add the bigger sizes um, as we go. Uh, anyways, but I'm really excited to post this pattern now because uh, to re-release it because um, it is. A really nice spring uh, pattern so let me just show you a little bit more it has uh, three quarter length sleeves and again this is a medium sorry I get this in my eyes this is a medium as uh, so it's just a little bit uh, bigger than I think I would have made the small but uh, it still fits quite as I, exp uh, I wanted it to fit so it has three quarter length sleeves um, it has this beautiful detail let me see if I can get out of the sun a bit. It has this beautiful, no, it has this beautiful detail uh, running from the cuffs that are made with um, uh, linen stitch. Wow, I had a blank there. And then there's the uh, caliber cable uh, running all the way up the shoulder and it splits. And let me remove my up underneath it splits and goes into the front and into this um, let's say it's a more like a shallow V shape and then all around and it actually has a really fun construction so it also has the linen stitch on the bottom it's knit from you start cast on on the cuff and then you knit everything sideways and the same with the other one and then you knit the front and the back pieces and you graph them together um, with this visible line of grafting that I think is really beautiful um, so yeah it's a really fun fun piece to knit there's some fun um, construction methods that I kind of invented I don't know if I invented them but I mean I came up with them on my own but I probably someone else did something similar at some point point. Uh, let me just show you the back because I didn't on the back it has uh, just less of a V it doesn't have a V shape it's just um, meeting yeah, and it's, uh, I think it's a very nice piece for spring and like colder summer days because of these short sleeves and the open neckline. So I think it's a perfect time to get it out there. It, it's knit up in a um, woolly mammoth fiber BFL Masham, Masham, Masham? <laughs> a base that is really beautiful. This is in her peony colorway. Let me see if I can show you a little bit better, even if the sun is kind of in the way. Uh, it's a really beautiful, soft but rustic yarn. I love it so much. Uh, I know it's been quite popular. I know other dyers have been um, using the BFL Massam lately. So, let me see if I can move my chair a bit. 
get kind of situate myself and get more and more mess in the background. Yeah, my plan not to show all the mess in the background kind of uh, didn't work out. Um, oh, where was I? Uh, it's probably going to be all over for this episode. It's okay. I um, I really love this yarn. I actually am planning to make something else in this yarn for the fall, but yeah, you will have to wait and see. And what else is there to say? I talked about this sweater a lot in the past, um, so I don't want to repeat everything. Uh, but I just think it's a really fun knit. There's some some fun details and yeah. It's very easy to knit and it's knit up, it's a DK weight, so it doesn't take that long. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to say about this one. So, I don't have any finished objects this um, for this episode, but I am working on a second sample of a design that is currently being tested. Um, I've shown you this one before. I think I showed it in the last episode as well. This is a little uh, crop tee uh, with a fake. Um, it's a fake cardigan style, so it is knit in the round and has really short little sleeves. It still has ends that are not woven in. It's not completely. Uh, I'm completely finished it um, and this round neckline. Uh, but when I was writing up the pattern and getting it rest ready for testing, so I knit this long time ago um, and I want to have it ready for this spring summer, I, um, I thought it would be nice for something this simple, because it's a fairly simple pattern, uh, to make um, like a second option or a, a ver like a different version. So this one is quite cropped and what I normally experience when I make a cropped pattern, which I have done before, is people really want to make it longer. So instead of just putting suggestions, I decided to make a second version. And this version is not only longer, but it, al it is also without the button placket. So it's more like, um, like a simple t-shirt um, and the rest is the same. So it's the same, has the same amount of ease, it has the same... Uh, uh, construction but it just doesn't have this uh, fake button placket and it's longer um, so this is how far I am so you can see it's quite a bit longer and I'm right now working the neckline so it has needles sticking out um, and I just have to uh, pick up for the sleeves and knit the sleeves so I'm pretty much I'm really close to being finished I knit this up in um, and this beautiful yarn, which is Knitting for Olive uh, Cotton Merino in the colorway called uh, Rosa Mousse in Danish, but that is uh, Rose, I think in English it's called Rose, Rosa Mouse or something. So it's, it's a very interesting color. It does look quite purple, at, in, at, like it's a gray, but with a pink undertone, like very light pink undertone. and it, in some lights it does have this purpley color. I mean, let's be honest, it looks like a lighter version of this one. <laughs> uh, it seems like a color I'm really um, drawn to. Um, it's it's a very beautiful color, but it's funny how it changes in some lights. Yeah, I know there's a lot of... I, I find it really charming with the sun sunspots, but if it bothers you, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it makes this very nice light fabric. It is a light fingering, uh, so you can, as you can see, you kind of notice my fingers through, but it is not so see-through, I don't find. Um, so it's a light fingering, and the thing is, I knit this one up in a yarn that when I looked on Ravelry, it says DK. I don't think, I wouldn't call this a DK. Let's see if you can get a feeling for the thickness. Uh, for me, it's like a sport, maybe. Um, just comparing it to this light fingering, you can see, oh. you want to focus? Okay. No? Ah, let me just, <laughs> uh, focusing problems, there you go. You can see that it is thicker, but it's not, 
Maybe it's because I'm not so used to... So the other one is made in a cotton linen blend and this one is uh, 80% cotton and 20% wool. And I don't... Maybe I'm just not so used to work in uh, plant fibers. Um, but I think... I wouldn't call that a DK. This is a DK. This is quite a lot thicker, I find. But of course, when it's a woolly yarn, it kind of it fills out the spaces anyway they have the same gauge and they're knitted the same gauge and this fabric is of course more drapey uh, but I wanted it kind of light and so I think it's nice because the pattern can be worked at a th with a thicker yarn and with a thinner yarn depending on how much drape you want so if I can show you it's also quite a bit heavier um, <laughs> I'm all over here so you can see this does have some drape, uh, but it's much, it's a bit denser fabric. I don't find it stiff or anything, but it's a bit denser. And I think for white, for white, um, for such a light color, it's nice that it has, a, it's a bit more dense. Whereas this one is very drapey, very flowy. Um, but I actually, yeah, I just, that's why I made the second sample. I wanted to test out, um, so you don't have to do all the <laughs> the work, uh, which how it would work with different types of yarn, like a little bit different thickness. Again, maybe from like light fingering to sport, let's say. Um, so it's been it's very nice. I can't wait to wear this. I think it will be so perfect for spring, um, and it has the same actually the same kind of grafting. I just as the Nerea, but this time. It's what I'm wearing, but this time I used it on the, um, on the shoulder to grab the shoulders, so yeah. And it has a folded hem, I don't know if I showed. Uh, I have a little video up, so if you've subscribed to my channel, you have probably noticed that I put up a video for how to do this folded hem. Um, I don't, I normally keep my videos uh, private for my patterns because I yeah, they take time and if there's some kind of specific technique that is only for my pattern, I think it makes sense to keep it private. But um, I I found that, I mean, this is a technique that you can find many, many videos for, so I didn't, I didn't think it was necessary to, uh, to keep it private. Uh, yes, what else? This pattern will come in a large size range so it will come from extra small to 4xl and it's currently being tested and hopefully it will be ready for the end of april it's uh, knit on 3.33 millimeter needles um but it is a quite uh it's a quick knit and it's, it's very simple so you can kind of go round and round and round and if you're doing the cropped version it's very quick so uh, it's almost done. I've been working quite a lot on this one um, and in the same and actually uh, the, the one I'm making now it uses up uh, it seems like it's only going to use up uh, three balls um, three 50 gram balls of uh, light fingering weight so that's great. Uh, let me see if I have the label. No, I don't have the label here so yeah I um, the next thing I've been working on is, 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 is. Oh, now the sun is pretty much, let me just focus over here so you can see, uh, is this little thing, I posted it on Instagram a few times and some of you already guessed what it is, it's, um, it's a mini version of the Famo sweater that I released earlier this year and I have knit one sleeve and I'm working on the, uh, the sun. I, I can't do anything. I don't have curtains on this window and I don't want to move everything around. <sighs> Fiber prone. Okay, if I keep it here you can see. So I'm working on the second sleeve in the honeycomb brioche pattern that is the same as my um, as I use for my Favo sweater, so in many ways it will be the same sweater, but I will change a few details on the, um, on the, 
what am I saying? I will change a few details on the front panel as I think it will be a little bit too much for the small children's size. So yeah, sleeves and I'm knitting this one in a yarn that is also from Knitting for Olive and this video is not sponsored. I wish it was because I love the yarn. Um, they, I just think they have very beautiful yarns and also, but mainly the colorways. But this yarn is one of these, uh, <laughs> let me put it here. <laughs> it's a blow yarn. So that means it has like uh, this uh, um, kind of, uh, like it's a tube and a tube of um, merino wool that has been yeah, made into like a little t knitted tube and then you blow uh, this very fluffy soft merino into it. And this is the colorway Plum Rose, Plum Rosa, uh, and it's 100% organic merino, uh, Ecotex standard, uh, and that's another thing I really like about Knitting for Olive. They have, um, I think all the yarn or most the yarn is Ecotex. So, and it's always uh, muesling free and so on. Um, and this one is 100 meters per 50 grams. I have four balls. I actually think I might just be able to do it with three, but I have four balls of this. Um, and yeah, it's knitting up. Uh, I use the same needle size, but the gauge is a little bit different. So I just changed the gauge for the smaller size. Um, but it's such a dream to work with. This is such a soft yarn. I mean, I like my rustic yarns, but I also like something really soft. And for my daughter, I wanted something that I know she's not going to complain about because knitting for her, it's not always things get worn as much as I wish because she might complain that it's itchy or something. Um, did I say it's a double, it's the double soft merino? Let's see if we can find a spot without too much light. There you go. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very beautiful yarn. So I got this yarn to make that one up and I think I will put it into testing once I'm done uh, knitting the sample. So I'm th I think it might come out this summer sometime. I for, I, I'm not going to hold on to it for fall, I don't think, for this one. Actually, that is it for this um, this episode uh, for the knitting content. I uh, I knew it was probably gonna be a little bit short, but I really wanted to make a video, and uh, I have only one last thing that I remember right now before I get into because I'm going to make a little Q and A uh, for the rest of the video. But uh, one last announcement or a bit of admin stuff is that. I was planning to have a shop update this weekend. Actually, I was planning it for last weekend. Then I postponed it for this weekend. And I'm not going to have a shop update. Um, if you don't know what it's about, it's uh, I have made uh, organic Gotland yarn from my parents' sheep. And I have already had two updates. And I have one, the last third of the yarn left that I wanted to um, put in an update uh, for this... Um, yeah, to have up now, but uh, because of the whole thing going on in the world, and I'm not going to say any words because I think YouTube doesn't like it or something. Uh, but because of that, I am afraid that the mail would not go out to all countries. Um, it changes so quickly and I'm just really nervous that it might be stuck somewhere in some uh, storage or yeah, I don't want to risk anything. So I'm going to postpone the update a little longer until at least I know that things are a little more stable. So just so you know, uh, the yarn, because I got some questions about it, it will come out at some point, but keep an eye on my Etsy shop. Uh, you can see there's like a little update notification, um, a little, uh, how do you say? Somewhere in my shop, you can see like a little note from me saying uh, when the next update will be. And right now it says postponed. Uh, if not, on Instagram is the best place to know what is going on. I will try to post it um, when I decide it's ready. Uh, I'm ready, but I don't want to. And then the other thing is I have much less time to work uh, and packing orders would just 
be very put yeah it would be much more stressful i could still do it but it would be slower and yeah i just let's wait oh now the sun is really going for me let's wait until um i know a little bit more about how it's gonna look like uh, for the next month uh, i think this is gonna last for some time so i got some questions um on Instagram I asked if you had any questions for me and I saved them so let me just find the uh, 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 the pictures um, yeah there are some different questions and I'm gonna just gonna maybe try to put them together in editing so they make more sense <laughs> I was asked if I have any tips on how to cope with the new situation with the staying at home and not being able to go out um i want to say the only tip i have and i don't know if i'm very good at this because as i said we are not we haven't been working so i understand for people who have to work and having the kids home and some kids with their bigger they have to go to school as well uh, i can imagine it's quite tough but uh, for us um we just been ha doing making one plan per day or at least just one and maybe some days we had more plans but for example some days the, the only plan would be to um, to go somewhere uh, with the car to the coast and then just take a little walk and that would be the main plan and then of course we would do other things around that um, but also just some days it has been planting some seeds in the garden, getting little things ready. And even if you cannot go out, you can plant seeds. Uh, I've also been doing a lot of planning and uh, getting things online, so I'm ready to do these things. So in most places, I guess the postal system is still working. So you could, um, you could get some, let me move this a little bit more. Uh, you could get some, some stuff like some seeds and some dirt and yeah. Uh, I used all the egg, egg, uh, how do you call those, the egg packages, the, they come in, in, at least in Denmark, they're in this kind of paper material, so you have all these little uh, holes where you could plant, can plant stuff, so we've been using those to plant some seeds, uh, we've been in the garden a lot, um, and we just try to have one little plan for each day. We take the bike out, so we have this cargo bike and I can put the kids inside and my partner is on his bike, so we go for bike rides. It's just about especially getting out the house for me if I don't want to get too overwhelmed with the, the mess and the house that needs cleaning and stuff. We try to have one thing each day um, and just focus on having a good time and not seeing this as a bad time because I can sometimes get a bit stressed with the kids and if they're not in the mood for anything and just yeah it can be a handful with two kids in the house but it's I just been focusing on having the best time possible and it's actually been working and we've been really enjoying spending time together the kids have been quite calm and I'm really happy about that they seem to really enjoy being home with us uh, sometimes in the weekend, I guess because it's only two days, some it it feels like we don't we don't manage to calm down and and find each other. And now we have kind of found each other. I will say today though, after one and a half week, it was a bit of a ah day, but there are days like that too. Um, but yeah, we've been it's been really nice, and I just hope it will keep being this nice, uh, the weather being nice really helps as well. So some questions about uh, knitwear designing and being a knitwear designer. I have a question. What, how did I learn? How did you learn to grade sweaters? And could you do a video on it? I won't do a video on it because I don't think I'm the best person at grading sweaters. Plus it's a lot of explaining. Uh, I will uh, recommend how, how I learned it is really just starting and closing my eyes and diving in at the deep end it I'm not the best with math I guess actually when doing sweaters is quite simple math and I'm not bad with the simple math but still it's not something that comes really natural to me so it just it's not something that is my brain really likes doing I don't know why um, but 
I can do it. It's not a problem. And so I just, yeah, I just started and tried. And every time I make a pattern, I feel like I learn something new and it gets better. Uh, but there are, I feel like it was hard when I started to find resources. There are more and more resources, resources and people who have done blogs and um, stuff like that online. I will say, if you want to grade a sweater, uh, you need to go to the Yarn Council website. They have the sizing uh, there, the standard sizing. Also, Is Isolde Teague has a, a very good... Um, Excel spreadsheet with the sizing in inches and in centimeters with, for a lot of different parts of the body. Um, and then I would recommend that you go watch uh, Sari Nordlund's um, uh, videos. Uh, she talk, has a video series on writing patterns and uh, I will link it below and also uh, Sister Mountain has a blog where she has a lot of help for how to do it. Um, I still have to sit down and really re read her post on how to um, use the spreadsheet better for grading because I kind of just do it with the calculator and I know there are ways to do it that makes things a little bit easier. I have to move again. I'm really getting the sun in my eyes. Um, so I would really recommend that you go to check those out. I might be forgetting some and there are probably others, uh, but those are really easy to, yeah, to, to use and to, it, it's not hard to, to read what they say and to get, get started. Um, but I won't say, I wouldn't do anything on it because I don't think that's my strong point and then get a tech editor to help you out that everything looks okay and that the numbers are, are right and stuff. Um, I had a question of uh, what, I've, what I did as a job before I started working as a knitwear designer. I, um, I uh, have a master's in Spanish language and culture. I feel like I say that in every episode now, um, but I have, and I worked as a Spanish teacher in high school, but uh, right now it's really difficult to get jobs uh, full-time uh, as a Spanish teacher. So I did some, uh, um, how are they called? Some, I did, I worked as an, uh, I want to say intern. It's not intern, it's, um, oh, what's the word? Anyways, I was only there part time, and yeah, I I worked with as a teacher, and I also did some some other teaching, and then I what have been have I been doing? I worked as uh, I've been doing some work online, and um, yeah, just little bits here and there, and it's been really hard for me to get like a steady job and. And that's also part of the reason why I finally decided to give Fiber Tales a go. Because maybe if I had had a steady job, I would have waited until things were a little more... Mm. Yeah, I don't know if I would have had the courage, but kind of I was kind of pushed into it. And I just made it easier to say, why not just do what I really want to do and let's see how it goes. Um, so I also... I got a question how long I've been working as a knitwear designer. I have been working, I've been doing fiber, I started doing fiber tails, what, three years ago, I think. Um, but then I had maternity leave for one year, which meant I haven't been releasing any patterns for the last year. So yeah, it's, I don't know how to exactly, what to say. Um, but I am, since February, I'm working as, on it full time. I was asked, uh, one of the questions is if I would ever put mohair in the, um, in any of my knits, uh, and if I could share why and why not. Uh, I have put mohair in my Favo sweater, which I released recently. You can find it in my Ravelry patterns. Uh, and I held it double with uh, a, r a rustic, more rustic yarn with Steldon. And I really love that combination. Uh, I like mohair, but I'm not like, I'm not the one who like really soft, fluffy, fluffy kind of uh, sweaters. I mean, I do, I really, if you look on this one, it is so soft and 
squishy, uh, but doesn't have so it's not like going into my nose, like the little fibers are not flying around all over. And so I really like something like this, uh, but I also like more rustic yarns and I do like adding some more hair because it, I'm, I really like it also for the effect it gives to the color. So it has this kind of little more watercolory uh, look to it. And I really like that on more hair. So I think I might even like it more for the colors than for the, um, for the softness. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm not like one of those people who are completely insane with uh, the whole mohair trend, but I also I understand it has its place and I like it for some things. Um, I, I also, I'm also asked what is my favorite color, and is, this is also the color I knit the most with, with which I think is interesting. Um, when I used to always say my favorite color was green. Uh, I don't think it's green anymore, but I really love deep greens, but I rarely knit with them. So that's one thing. I think right now I really like uh, like muted, um, dusty colors, like warm, earthy tones. So from this pink, like uh, dirty pinks almost, um, to more rosy colors, to grays, to brown, so I'm to these kind of uh, rusty browns. I really like those. Well, if you have watched me for a while, you know I like the the rusty color, like the um, the caramel rust colors. Um, so yeah, I'm very much attracted to. I rarely knit with blue. Uh, blue is not a color I like it, but I, I rarely, yeah, gravitate towards blue. So right now it's mo mainly the rosy, dusty. Like earthy tones and then grace. I still love grace and as I said the rest. I have a question if I've done any videos in Danish and no I haven't done any videos in Danish. I don't know how I would probably be really bad at speaking about knit knitting in Danish at, because I'm so used to speaking about it in English and I yeah I could probably do videos in Danish let me know if you would be interested in any Danish videos but I yeah I'm just very used to the whole podcasting in English so uh, it would be a very different experience I uh, I think if you want to watch some Danish podcast because the person said uh, I'm trying to learn Danish and think that would be so fun and um, go watch uh, um, I would put a link down below she's really sweet and uh, she does videos in Danish so uh, just to mention one, there are many, many, many podcasters at the moment uh, doing videos in Danish, but she's one I would like to recommend. Uh, I have a question now that we're in the Danish part of uh, things. Um, if I've ever went to a Steiner school, uh, Steiner is a kind of um, uh, ped ped pedagogic, ped <laughs> wow, that's a word I haven't said in English. Uh, it's a kind of philosophy for teaching children very free and very creative and no I haven't went gone to Steiner school I went to our very small local uh, village school that was only up uh, we had classes were only until 13 years and I really loved it there until the teen years and then we had to go to another school that was in the next village and I kind of hated those years because being a teenager was not easy apparently and stuff uh, but I really loved my school and my teachers when I was a kid um, it was a very nice school but small and very much a village school uh, I, there's also some more language questions um, uh, the one question is you mentioned once that your grandmother comes from the Netherlands do you speak a little Dutch I don't speak Dutch but I'm quite used to the sound of it as my grandmother was um, yeah, uh, sometimes she we had uh, relatives uh, from the Netherlands, and my mom speaks Dutch, and so I'm I would say I'm used to the sound. I'm more used to the um, not candy, but how should you say all the stuff you eat on top of the bread, like uh, pindakas and moshes and hagelslag and stofwafel, which is not on top, of course. And I remember my grandmother making wintertafias and stuff like that. So I'm, I have a lot of these words that I know and that I, I, it's just childhood memories that are really nice, but I don't speak Dutch like that, no. Um, 
I also got a question about what languages we speak in our home and uh, yeah, I uh, we speak um, Danish, so me and my partner speak Danish, he learned Danish, he's from Poland and he learned Danish, uh, he's been here for 10 years and he learned Danish after some years, he did the whole language school thing um, and then I first we spoke English and then we had we switched to Danish uh, after some time. It took some time because it was really strange for me speaking Danish to him. Uh, on English we were on the same level and then in Danish we were kind of on two different levels. So that was a bit, uh, yeah, just turning it a bit. Uh, it was a bit weird for me and it just, uh, that being on the same level, um, linguistically speaking, anyways, he's really good at Danish so it's not a problem now. We kind of I don't never think about it and he speaks Polish to our girl and she has she's more and more speaking Polish back to him um, still sometimes she just puts in Danish words and Danish constructions and stuff but she's actually starting to speak a lot of Polish to him and well we, he's the same with our boy uh, he only speaks Polish to them so never anything else and we speak Danish together and I speak Danish to the kids so that's they're gonna be bilingual and uh yeah i don't speak my other languages that wouldn't make sense for me to speak spanish or italian to the kids because they're not my mother tongue and uh, i i would love to teach them when they're older but it's not for now i think uh, and there was one more question uh, yeah uh, there's a question about if i would ever organize a live on youtube uh, where we could all connect together and knit and that would be a lot of fun. Oh, I'm kind of not here anymore. <laughs> I'm just one big light blob. Uh, that would be a lot of fun, but um, yeah, I just have to, f uh, not right now, as long as my son is small, because it would probably be in the evening for people to be able to, to attend, to yeah, uh, join, uh, at least the evening where in Europe and um my kids are my son is still calling for me sometimes so maybe later on i would like to do it um maybe, yeah i i would probably also be really awkward <laughs> like here when i do the video um when i talk to to the camera i can i know i can always stop it and start over if something if it's not working i'm just saying weird things so i didn't like what i said so that would be a little bit different but maybe it's an idea I can think about it. The question, if I play any musical instruments, I play the piano. Uh, well, I played the piano. I, I remember a few songs, but I, it's pretty sad by now. But I used to play the piano when I was younger and I loved playing classical piano. Um, and I had a dream at some point to learn to play the accordion, the um, diatonic accordion. So the one where you have buttons and you kind of make different sound if you pull it in and out. Um, after I went to a folk music festival in France, I was really in love with that instrument and but it's just it's hard when you don't have anyone teaching you. So I but it kind of has the same idea as the piano, although making different sounds in one in direction and then another one in a when you pull it back and forth it just was a bit confusing. But I yeah, I really like playing the piano, but it's I don't have a piano here. I only play when I go to my parents' place. So I think that's it. Um if uh, one last one, if my daughter benefits from all of my knitting and well she does sometimes but it's not always she's so excited about it, so yeah. She benefits sometimes. I'm sorry for the lie. I cannot Actually, I could move back to where I started, but now I'm not going to move everything even more. So I think that's it for this episode. It was very lovely talking to you. I hope you're all safe where you are and that this kept you company for a little bit, being home and stuff. I hope to talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.